all you precious, wonderful, pretty, gorgeous looking ladies. <laughs> I feel a little nervous in an all women meeting. <laughs> but I'm, we are one big happy family, aren't we? Yeah. Right? And this is my home in the US and my home church. So I should feel comfortable, not nervous, right? But I feel a little nervous because Pastor Joe Sweet mentioned yesterday, you all are terrifying army. <laughs> so while we remain standing, let's close our eyes for a word of prayer. And let's lift up our hearts and look unto the Lord Jesus. And let's ask him, here I am, Lord. I have come before your presence as your humble handmaiden. Speak unto me, Lord. Be it unto me according to all the words that you will command unto me. With this in mind, I now ask you, no, 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 no. I'm now telling you. <laughs> With this in mind that I just told you, now I ask you to open your heart and talk to the Lord Jesus for a moment now. You tell him, why are you here? Why have you come here? I see the Lord Jesus Christ standing in our midst just below the stage here and he's unfurling a very large and long scroll that stretches from one end of this church to another end exactly where the front row people are seated from one end to another end and he says in these are written all the works that my daughters are going to do in these last days. And I see this scroll divided into three sections. And I see in bold letters on each section, one I see the name of Miriam, another the name of Deborah, and another the name of Anna. And right down below each section, each category, I see many, many people's names written. Those who have that anointing, those who are called for that work, all their names are written under each category. Your names are written there. I see the Lord Jesus is lifting up his head and looking at every one of you and with a smile on his face like a father would smile at his little girls and he's saying to you, I am writing your name in this scroll. You are mine. Do not live for yourselves. This day, decide purpose for yourselves. 
that you will no longer live after the flesh. You will no longer live after the desires of your flesh and the desires that attract your eyes and the desires that lure you away from me. Will you do that? I have come to call you to be mine, my warrior bride, to be my princess, my darling, to be crowned with not only the crown of life, but also the warrior's crown the martyr's crown. Who among you are willing to wear such a crown? Many will say, yes Lord, we will wear the crown of life. But who among you will wear the crown of righteousness that belongs to my martyrs? belongs to those who are willing to lay down their lives, not counting it precious, but counting it dung and loss for the excellency of my knowledge. Who will go on my behalf when the day of war begins? When the enemies of the cross arise and will challenge my bride and will challenge my church, who will go and say to the enemies, Halt! The king is here. I am the king's ambassador. You shall not go any further. I see many women saints standing in our midst right now. They all dress as warriors. Oh, I see this one among them is this saint, martyred saints called Anne, who was martyred for the Lord in France. Oh, wonderful Lord Jesus. Who among you is willing to say, Here I am, Lord. I am willing to lay down my life for you. If you are willing, you kneel down wherever you are right now. And you offer your life as a consecrated sacrifice unto the Lord Jesus Christ right now. <clears throat> yes, now I remember. The saying that I'm saying is Joan of Arc, the martyred warrior princess of the Lord. Oh my God. As you are kneeling down before the Lord and making your consecration, I see this saint lifting up her sword. Please only kneel if you are willing to lay down your life as a martyr for the Lord Jesus. You are willing to sacrifice and lay it as a seat for the Lord Jesus.
Open your heart and talk to him. Make a full consecrated surrender. And lay all on the altar. 100%. Holding back nothing. It's all or nothing. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. The Holy Scripture says, He who lays down his life will take it. He who is willing to lose his life will gain. The Lord Jesus signifies to me right now There is a great company Of women Martyred saints Who are waiting To work together With the women Who have been called and chosen To be martyrs A huge company of warrior, woman warriors, woman martyrs, woman prophetess, woman worshippers, woman intercessors. This has been God's secret army kept in reserve, kept hidden. For a long, long time. For such a time as this. Lift up your holy hands. Lord Jesus, please look at each and every one of the hands that are lifted up before your presence right now. These are your daughters. These are your princesses. These are your little girls. The daddy's girls. Who have humbled themselves before their king and before their maker. To answer the call To offer themselves as a living sacrifice Who are willing To offer their lives as a seed Because your word says Except the corn Falls down to the ground and die It abides alone but when it dies, it will bring forth much fruit. So here are your daughters, Lord. Here are your warrior princess. Receive them, Lord. As it seemeth good to you. Now I ask you. Stretch out your blessing hands And lay it upon them right now Lord I ask you to do something new Right now Lord Not only those who are here But even those who are afar off Who are also kneeling down in consecration Lay your hands Upon them right now And let them feel 
let them feel your hand touching them right now let them feel lord let them feel let them physically feel your hand touching them right now right now right now As you are touching them, heal their broken hearts, heal their broken bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let them be healed right now. Let their broken hearts be healed. Let all their sorrows flee. Let your hand wipe away their tears. Let them feel your touch, Lord. Give them a tangible experience now. A tangible experience of your glory, of your anointing flowing all over them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet right now, right now. Flow, Holy Spirit. Flow over them. Let your glory sweep all over them. Let your glory sweep all over them. Let your glory sweep all over them. Thank you, wonderful God. Come on, everybody. Lift up your holy hands. And bless the name of the living God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh. Like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. 
Let's stand up to our feet. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. We bow our hearts before Your presence. O oh Lord, our God, thank you, Lord, for laying your blessing hands upon each and every one of your dear daughters. Thank you for allowing them to feel your gentle touch. Thank you for allowing them to feel you walking past by them. Thank you for allowing them to feel your rope brushing by them. Thank you for allowing them to feel the warm, your warm breath blowing upon their face. Thank you, Lord. Oh, how great is your love for your dearly beloved consecrated daughters. One more time we lift up our holy hands unto you. And we say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. And all that is within me, Lord, will bless your holy name, because you are a good God, your grace and mercy endures forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please be seated. You know, the Holy Bible tells us, our eyes have not seen, neither have our ears heard, and neither has it entered into our minds the great things that God has prepared for him for them but I like to add something new eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the mind of man how good God is Amen His great goodness that surpasses everything you know, when the prophet Moses wanted to see the glory of God, so the Lord told him, okay, come and wait for me on the mountain. But God also told him, you know, no man can see me. So when, when the Lord said that to the prophet Moses, and Moses became so sad. You know how when some when your children come up to you and they say, Daddy or Mommy, give me this, give me that. And when you say no, you know how very pitiful their face becomes. And not only they are so pitiful, but when they are small and cute, they have this cherubic pitiful look <laughs> that will melt any hard stone. Have you been there? So, the prophet Moses' face was just like that. So pitiful. And so very cherubic. So God looked at his face. And his heart was moved with compassion. 
he said technically you cannot see but because you are so dear to me i will make a way for you to see but you cannot see my face the least i can do for you is to show you my back so moses was so glad at least to see the back so god told him okay you get up very early in the morning because the early bird catches the worm <laughs> you know that don't you all right if you go late all the other worms will be eaten so he got up early in the morning brushed his teeth had his coffee <laughs> and then he climbed up the mount he was waiting for god and then the time came and the glory of god came and god hit him on the cliff of a rock and when god passed by he saw the back of god but before that god trumpeted his character all his goodness you know you imagine for a moment now if just the back part is the display of the abundant goodness of god what would be the seeing the face of god greater goodness or rather infinite goodness no eyes have seen no ears have heard no minds have comprehended the great goodness of god you know this is the 38th year that i am in the ministry and i can say with this little experience of mine no one can fathom the great goodness of god great goodness i remember one very memorable incident a minister's friend of mine his wife was dying this girl was born with a hole in her heart a terrible hole so the doctors told her father don't worry about the hole when your daughter grows so the hole will close have you heard doctors say like that oh so american doctors are the same as eastern doctors but as the girl kept growing the hole gets bigger it didn't close it got bigger and uh, she didn't realize how big or bad the hole was until she got married and then she conceived and uh, when she conceived her heart was also getting bad so now she was in a dilemma to have the baby or to save her heart so anyway and because of her bad heart condition she could not have a normal delivery so the doctor recommended that she have a c section so that her heart is not put to great strain in having to push the baby out so they took the baby out but that cause a heart to deteriorate so the doctor recommended her to go for a major surgery and uh, she went under the table and during the surgery the surgeon accidentally cut a valve and blood shot out from a heart like you would open a tap and it flow not just a tap you know have you seen a fireman with a hose and the water has come out just like that and there was great panic in the operation theater because what are you going to do now this is a pastor's wife she's going to die now and the surgeon was a christian so he prayed and somehow he did something and it stopped 
So, praise God, the blood stopped. And the surgery was a success. However, because of the cut of the valve, it caused a great damage to her heart and she became in a pathetically worse condition after than before. So then the doctors told the, her husband, now your wife needs to go for another major surgery to repair whatever damage that was done before. And by this time, this pretty young woman became skin and bones. I saw her before her marriage. She was a very gorgeous looking young woman. But then when I saw her, when she was very sick, I couldn't recognize her. It's like putting skin on a skeleton. That's how she looked like. Very, very terrible to look at. And she could not walk more than three steps. Every three steps, she had to sit and catch her breath. And she couldn't walk up the steps either. Every two steps, she would just sit on the steps and catch her breath. That's how bad she became. So now, they need to go for a big major surgery which is going to cost tons of money and the bad part is this there's no guarantee that she can survive her surgery so the doctor had her husband sign to waiver any lawsuits against the hospital or against a surgeon in the eventuality that this girl will die. So the husband signed. And you know what's another amazing thing? This young woman, when she was small, being a Buddhist, she had a knowing inside her that she will die young. How they all know, I don't know. So she had that knowing. So she was, the story that I'm telling you now, took place when she was 32 years old. Have a small little son. And uh, the husband and the wife were prepared that the wife can die on the operating table. There's no way, medically no way, she can leave. To make matters worse, two prophets whom I know very well, who walk very close with God, when they prayed for her, they said, her time has come to die. The time that God has for her is up. So she will die on the operating table and God is calling her home. You know, when two great prophets who really walk with God like Moses and Enoch gives you such a word, how can you argue against that, right? On one side, it is good. Because you don't have to live in this sinful world anymore. Right? On another side, it's not too good because you are dying young. Even an 80 year old person doesn't like to die. They like to live forever and ever and ever. <laughs> oh yes, true, you know. I have 80, 80 year old, 85 year old person come to me for prayer to have their lives prolonged. <laughs> so I asked, I tell them, you know, everybody have to die one day. So you have already lived 85 long years. Why do you want to live another one more year? Anyway, that's my reasoning. It's okay. <laughs> so this girl had one last dying wish. She told her husband, since I'm going to die, I have one last desire. I would like Brother Sadhu to pray for me before I will to the operating table. I want his blessing, last blessing, before I die. So her husband called me in India. Or this family lives in Singapore. So he called me and he told me the wife's request. So that really broke my heart because I know this family very well. 
So I said, all right, I am going to Tibet and I will be passing by Singapore. So I will make a stop over to pray for your wife. So I went to the hospital on the day of her surgery. And like I told you earlier, she was just skin and bones. And the, the mood in the hospital was one of hopelessness. The husband, I could see his face. He was fighting every tear that was crying to break out of his eyes. He was fighting to hold it back because he didn't want to cry before his wife. And the wife was holding back her tears because she didn't want the husband to feel sad. And then their little son, four years old, was just running around everywhere, not knowing that in a little while, he's going to become motherless. So this was a pathetic condition in the hospital. So after all the little niceties that we talk, small talks, you know, so then the time came, the nurse came and uh, told the pastor, the time's up, your wife needs to be wheeled into the operating theater. So the pastor asked for a little time for prayer. So I started to pray. I closed my eyes and I just thought for a moment, this young pastor is going to become a widower. And he is a person who loves his wife too much. And he depends on her for everything. You know how many husbands do that? Right? They, they are practically helpless without their wives. Not a single spoon moves. <laughs> I have told many husbands like that, you know, why can't you do this work all by yourself? Anyway, that's a secret I will never understand for the rest of my life. <laughs> and so I thought about her husband. What will he do after her death? Probably he may remarry. Okay, well then, the number two wife be as good and faithful and supportive as the first wife? Yes, maybe no. It's a big question mark. It's a gamble that you'll take. Then I thought about the little boy. Little boy whom I dedicated when he was born. Just running around everywhere. He's going to become a motherless boy. What will happen to his future? How will he feel when he sees the mother's dead body? And if the father remarries, will the stepmother love this boy as dearly as the real mother. What will be his future? So I thought about all this and a great sorrow came into my heart. And then I began to pray. I said, Lord Jesus, the moment I said that, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared by my right side with great compassion on his face. And he asked me, what do you want? I said, Lord, please look at your daughter. And the woman was seated on the hospital bed and she buried her face in her hands and she was just crying and crying and crying because she knows that her end has come. So the Lord walked from my side and came and sat on her bed and he bent down very low to see her face and she was just weeping and crying and I went on praying for 20 minutes I prayed reminding God of all the promises that he gave to this family so I told the Lord you know you promised that the husband will be lifted up in the ministry if this woman dies how will she see all the promise you promise her son, even before he was born, you took me to heaven and he showed me the, that she will give birth to a son and his name should be this 
and then his future you know i was shown the boy's life from zero age up to 25 years i said lord this woman should be alive to see all that so i went on reminding the lord one by one all the promises say lord does not your word says a person shall live for 70 years and if not 80 years this girl is only 32 so by your by right according to your word she can live for another 38 years so why can't you consider that so I said, Lord, I'm not asking for 38 years. Suddenly I remembered Hezekiah. I said, Lord, why not just 15 years? Oh, then I said, no, 15 years may not be too good. <laughs> because I cal calculated the age of the boy. He was five years, and the Lord showed me his life up to 25 years. So I said, Lord, 20 years. Grant, grant 20 years. So as I prayed with such a broken heart, at the end of my prayer, the Lord looked up at me and he said, because you ask, I will do this for you. I will grant her life. And she will be all right. And you know, that sentence, all right, has many meanings. <laughs> because in a previous case, when I prayed for someone, the Lord told me everything will be all right and the person died. <laughs> that is also courage, you know, all right. <laughs> They've died. So all their sorrows gone. So when now when the Lord's repeated again, all right, I remember the past incident. <laughs> so I was wondering what does this all right really meant? So, I looked at the Lord and I said, you mean all right, meaning good all right? <laughs> he just smiled at me and said, everything will be all right. <laughs> so, the prayer ended. And I told the husband, don't worry, pastor. Everything will be all right. <laughs> so, she was wheeled into the operating theater. And you know, I was still not sure which all right is this all right. <laughs> so I stayed with the husband for five long hours. I wanted to take his mind off thinking about his wife. So we talked about everything under the sun and under the moon, under the stars. <laughs> At the end of the five hours, when the operation was over, the chief nurse came out of the operating theater and with a r r very loud terrifying voice she called out the name of the pastor and said where is mr so and so the moment the pastor heard the tone and the sound of the voice his heart stopped beating <laughs> because you know that's how you announce that someone has died so i hold the pastor's hand I said don't worry pastor everything is all right <laughs> Don't worry, everything will be all right. So we came to the, to the uh, intensive care, uh, the recovery room from surgery. And uh, then a surgeon came out, a Hindu surgeon. He came out, he looked at the pastor and he said, are you Mr. So-and-so? And the pastor was now shaking, you know. He said, yes, I am. Now, this is a Hindu man. Out of his mouth came out the words, everything is all right. <laughs> Surgery, 100% successful. And you know what? The best part of the story is, the, the surgeon even repaired the damage done by the previous surgeon and now 20 years have passed by the pastor's wife is in the pinkest of health yeah. 
See that day I saw the great goodness of God. How he condescended to answer the prayer of a person and overruled his will and added life till today she is living more than 20 years have passed how good god is amen that is why i say everywhere with all authority that god is a good god amen now do you know what is the name of this conference what median and what does median stands for very good oh you are so excellent so it's a threefold anointing that god is going to release in this last days upon the women you know last night after the meeting when i went back I was pondering about this conference and praying about today's meeting and i remembered a vision that i saw in the year 2006 which i felt that i should share with you so that you will know how important it is of the call in a woman's life for such a time as this so in this vision i saw i was walking into my house so we lived uh, this was way back in 2006 it was a, a double story house and on the upper floor was our office and my residence was on the ground floor and and the ground floor had two bedrooms so one was my bedroom and the other was a guest room so whenever we, any visiting ministers come they stay there and i walk into my house and i was about to enter into my bedroom where i saw something very very strange and extraordinary so instead of my bed and all the other stuffs in my room it was a they all were gone and there was a you know in the hospital in a operating room or in a mortuary where there's a stretcher like a bed so it was something like that and there was a woman on that bed and i saw a very dear minister friend of mine standing on the left side of this woman and trying to press her down from struggling to come out and i i was just standing and this woman she was just wriggling her legs and her hands and struggling to get out but he was just holding her down and i was standing and looking at the scene and the holy spirit showed me that woman was ashtaroth you know who is ashtaroth okay ashtaroth and uh, she he was trying to hold her down and he could not because she was very stronger and she was trying to fight she was struggling she was moving her hands moving her legs and she, it seems that he could not hold her much longer then the holy spirit told me you go and help so i went over and i told my friend now you can do this alone i will come to help you we will do it together and bind her so i went over to the same side where he was towards her leg and i held her leg and push it down when i did that she quit struggling so then i looked at my friend and said see you can do it alone we need to work together to overcome the spirit of astaroth so this i remembered last night and the holy spirit showed me or this morning when i was praying the word of the lord came unto me the spirit of jezebel 
and the spirit of Ashtaroth is going to rise up in all its power in these last days. The two, the two are going to be combined together. You know, both are terribly evil. One is greater, one is lesser. And, but when they combine themselves together, it will be like a great nuclear bomb. It's like a nuclear bomb with chemical weapons on it and everything. Can you imagine a nuclear bomb with chemicals in it and it drops somewhere? Not only it causes great destruction, but also the chemical flies everywhere to poison generations to come. So that sort of a thing is going to take place. That is the reason why instead of releasing one anointing, God is releasing three anointings. Three anointings. Because one alone is not enough. You know, the scripture says, a threefold cord cannot be easily broken. So these three anointings will come upon you. Some can receive all three, but some will just receive one. Which anointing will you receive? Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> good, good. Good to be greedy. <laughs> it's good to be greedy for godly things. But not all will receive three. Because how much you can receive or how much you will receive is dependent on how much you are willing to consecrate yourselves. How much you are willing to yield yourselves. How much you are willing to die yourselves. And how much you are willing to totally surrender yourselves. You know, when you really surrender, it should be unconditional surrender. There should be no conditions in your surrender. An unconditional surrender is like what Abraham was. See, when God said, leave your father's house and go, he left everything, packed his bag, and took his wife and just walked, not knowing where he was going. That is unconditional surrender. No questions asked. If you ask questions, it is not in, it is a conditional surrender. But this, but that. If you do this for me, then I will do this. Those are all conditional surrender. But in these last days, God is calling for unconditional surrender. In an unconditional surrendered heart, then the fullness of the anointing can be put in. If it is not unconditionally surrendered, then maybe according to the amount you surrender, then maybe just the Miriam anointing, or the Deborah anointing, or the Anna anointing will be released. This is one, one picture. Now picture number two. Though these three anointing can be combined together to be a great mighty force, but they are also specialists. See, there is the U.S. Army. Within the U.S. Army, there is the Navy, there is the Air Force, and there is the Army, right? But within the three armed forces, there is a specialist group called the Navy SEALs, called the Marines called the rangers, called the commandos, right? Those are specialist few. They're not a large group. Just a small number of specialists who make it till the end among the many. And, you know, once I, was, I watched a movie about the, the trainings of a marine. Out of 100 marines that go for the training, 
only 10 will pass out 90 fail that's how bad and hard the training is the best survives till the end so like that God will have a specialist with the Miriam anointing specialist with the Deborah anointing and specialist with the Anna anointing they are specialists so how to know to which are you called so this is what the Lord told me when you are going to hear the teachings today tomorrow morning and tomorrow night I will be touching on each one of the three to which you feel your heart been linked to that is your calling so this is a preface so keep an open heart when you are hearing when you are listening keep your heart open and undivided have no other thoughts no anything else come to distract you then while you are hearing you will feel an inner witness in your heart this is you this is you and you will get connected to that and then during the time of prayer that particular anointing or the mantle will come upon you understood everybody yes. all right then so the Miriam anointing the first among the three now who is Miriam like I told you the Miriam anointing she was a prophetess and a worshipper so that's what we understand about Miriam so who is Miriam the Bible tells us in numbers chapter 26 verse 59 that she was Moses eldest sister she's the first in the family then came Aaron then Moses and God used her together with Moses and Aaron to lead the Israelites from Egypt all the way in the wilderness. This we read in Micah chapter 6 verse 4. Now many things that I'm going to share with you now is what I receive from revelations from the Lord. Remember I shared with you on the first day that when we did this first Median Women's Conference in India, I had this visitation from Miriam 